All right, let's go ahead and get started with 2.8. It reads, for the spring assembly just shown, well, assembly in this case, but there's gonna be multiple problems we do. Uh, determine the nodal displacements, the forces in each element or the local element forces and the reactions. Uh, use the direct stiffness method for all problems. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, it seems like we're finally getting some numbers now in the example. So let's go ahead and get started with the little matrices, right? Um, for the first spring, K is equal to 1,000. Well, in both cases they are. So K1 is equal to, we're gonna put 1,000, negative 1,000, negative 1,000, and 1,000. And this is between nodes one and two, one, Two, right up up uh, k2 same thing it's gonna be the same values because the stiffness is the same so it's a thousand negative a thousand negative a thousand and a thousand and again the main point is the force vector times a stiffness matrix is equal to the stiffness matrix times the displacement vector um, so we always find K first. Um, we could go ahead and assemble it. This is from nodes two to three. Two, three, two, three. So that means big K, it's a three by three matrix, three nodes. So it's gonna be a three by three. Um, it's nodes one, two, three. Nodes one, two, and three. Let's go ahead and do it to here. So position one, one is right here. One, one, that is a thousand. Position one, two is right here. It's negative a thousand. Position two, one is right here, negative a thousand. And position two, two is a thousand. But we also have a position two, two here. So you just add them. So it's 2000. Um, similarly, right, two, three, it's right here, it's negative a thousand. Three, two, it's right here, negative a thousand. And finally, a thousand. Zero and zero. All right, cool. So we got the big K. We can go ahead and do step two. Uh, pretty much assemble the, the equation right here. So F1X, F2X, f 3x right that is equal to the stiffness matrix a thousand negative a thousand I'm trying to go fast um, it should be pretty straightforward by now if you saw the other videos I'm assuming but uh, I'm just copying and pasting the big matrix global stiffness matrix that's what they call it negative a thousand zero and a thousand and then the displacement vector, u1, u2, u3. All right, so let's go ahead and do the boundary conditions. Uh, so we got the boundary conditions. Um, one is not gonna move right, no matter how much force you pull with. This is fixed, so we can ho go ahead and put this, set this as zero. Uh, u2 is gonna move, u3 is gonna move. Okay, obviously, right? So now the forces. If you pull with 500 here, there's a force at node three, obviously, right? So we're gonna put 500 here. That's acting at node three. There's nothing acting at node two. And then we gotta find the force in one. Now, just by looking at it, um, there's only three forces, right? Three force values we could find. If this is zero and this is positive 500, that means this is gonna be negative 500. So we already know that, but unfortunately we have to prove it. You can't just say that. Um, we gotta find out how much two is gonna move. This node, it's gonna get displaced if you pull. We don't know by how much. Same with three. Um, so we could go ahead and start solving. Let's do the equations, right, that we could get from this right here. So F1x is step three. F1x is equal to a thousand times zero minus a thousand u2 
plus 0 times u3. So the second one, 0, is equal to negative 1,000 times 0 plus 2,000 u2 minus 1,000 u3. And then finally, 500 is equal to 0 times 0 minus 1,000 u2 plus 1,000 u3. All right, cool. Three equations, three unknowns. And again, I mentioned in the other videos, but you know you're doing something right if you know the displacement, but you don't know the force, or you know the force, but don't know the displacement. So notice how we have for two and three, we have the forces, but not the displacements. And for force, uh, for node one, we have the force. We're looking for the force, but we have the displacement. Hope I didn't just confuse that, but you know what I mean, right? You either have one or the other. So that means you're doing something right. This is equation one, two, and three. Um, let's see what we could do. So we can't use the first one yet. First, we got to find displacements. So that means equation one is out of the books for sure. Um, let's go to go step four. Obviously, we got to use equations two and three. Look, check it out. You learned this in matrix algebra. Two equations, two unknowns, in this case, U2 and U3. If you add both equations, zero plus 500 will be equal to these two added plus these two added. These will cancel out, so that's perfect. So let's do equation two plus equation three. So we're gonna have zero plus 500, that's 500, equals 2,000 minus 1,000 U2, that's just 1,000 U2 plus zero. These canceled out. So perfect, we could solve for U2. If you do that, you will get 0 0.5 inches for U2. So we got one of them, cool. And again, before you even start assembling this stuff, remember the matrix is in pound over inch. This is in pound, that means this force vector will be in inches. Displacement vector will be in inches. Uh, make sure all that lines up before you start doing all this. Make sure to convert if you have to from feet to inches, kilopounds to pounds, kilonewtons to newtons, millimeters to meters. Exact, everything. Oh, so step five, now that we have U2, we could actually find the force here by plugging in 0 0.5 here, and then you can find U3 by plugging in 0 0.5 here. So let's go ahead and do U3 first. Equation two. So we're gonna plug in 0 0.5 for U2. It's gonna be zero equals 2,000 times 0 0.5. Right, minus 1,000 U3. Move it over to the other side. You will get 1,000 U3 is equal to 1,000. Right, when you multiply these two, we get 1,000 U3 will be equal to one inch. Cool. So we got, we have U1, U2, and U3. We already had U1. Now we gotta find F1, F2, and F3. In this case, just F1, because we already have these two. All right, so step six. Let's go ahead and solve for force, right? Plug in U2, so we get, let's put equation one, you will get F1x is equal to negative 1,000 times 0 0.5, and voila, F1x is equal to negative 500 pounds. And again, negative 500, assuming this is your positive x. So again, I like to do the arrow. Negative 500 going this way, which is just F1x is equal to 500 pounds going this way. Again, the arrows will save your life, so try to get used to this. Um, step seven. So it's asking for the forces in each element. In other words, the local element forces. Let's go ahead and do step seven up here, just so you can see. Um, so for the first element, K1, we're going to use this matrix, and it's going to be uh, between two nodes, right? One and two. So it's going to be F1x, F2x, 
equals the matrix k1 a thousand be real careful which matrix you use in this case they're the same k1 and k2 but if this was 500 pounds per inch and this was a thousand then that could really mess you up so know which matrix to use each time so that's the k1 matrix times u1 u2 now u1 u2 we already found them 0 and 0 0.5 so let's go ahead and do those substitutions. 0, 0 0.5. And cool, we could go ahead and continue finding the first um, in element 1. That's how they denote it. So it's F1x of element 1 equals 1,000 times 0 minus 1,000 times half, or 0 0.5, right? That is negative 500 going this way. And then F2x of element 1 is equal to, right, because we're still doing just element 1. That is equal to 500 pounds going this way. So check it out. It's a negative 1,000 times 0 plus 1,000 times 0 0.5. Now, that's good. That means the forces cancel out. So that means this, it's, it's an equilibrium. You could see it. So that means, again, they're not both going this way. This one's negative 500, so they cancel out. I hope that makes sense. Um, so this is the answer for the first element. And then, all right, second element. Uh, it's between nodes 2 and 3, so the force is going to be force 2x, force 3x. And it is the second element, so we use this matrix, but it's... Same one, thousand, negative a thousand, negative a thousand, and a thousand. And U2 and U3 are 0 0.5 and 1. 0 0.5, 1. Solving for F2x of the second element, that's going to be a thousand times half, that's 500. Minus 1,000, that is negative 500 pounds going this way. And then F3x of element 2 is equal to negative uh, 500. Negative 1,000 times 0.5 is negative 500 plus 1,000. That is positive 500 pounds going this way again. In this case, all of them go this way because we're assuming positive in the positive x direction. So that makes sense, right? This F2x will cancel out with this F2x and you'll be forced, uh, you'll be left with zero force ultimately at this node. Do you see that? So 500 here, negative 500 canceled out, negative 500, so that means it's pulling this way and then positive 500 for element three, pulling this way 500. It's all in equilibrium. So that's the answer for this one. Um, I'll move it up just in case you couldn't see, but they're a lot easier now that we have values. But yep, there it is.